Welcome to another session on writing interim report uh, for your project. And my task is to explain to you the design section. What you should uh, include in the design section, we we'll look at. And uh, if you look at the software development life cycle, what you see on the screen is uh, one version of that where you have problem definition, systems analysis, system design, system development, maintenance are the main uh, uh, phases. And I will look at the uh, system uh, design section. So, the methodology as you know, it executes the system development stages of the system development life cycle. It is not the same as the uh, system development life cycle. It defines a set of activities, modeling methods, deliverables, etc. Examples of uh, 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 methodology, uh, uh, structured methodology, SSADM is an example, uh, object oriented methodology, IBM is rational unified process is an, uh, is an example of a methodology and you also call it a, a process in object oriented textbooks. And also in addition to uh, these uh, examples, you may also have uh, the agile methodologies uh, such as uh, Scrum, extreme programming. And uh, we'll now look at uh, uh, what are modeling methods. So if you take a structured methodology like SSADM, there are modeling methods like document flow diagrams, DFD, data flow diagrams, interrelationship diagram, entity life histories, etc. They are the modeling methods used in this uh, SSADM or structured systems analysis and design methodology. And if you take the object oriented uh, uh, methodology, where you, if you take a rational, uh, rational unified process, there are 14 UML diagrams you can draw in this uh, uh, when you are following the rational unified process. And uh, there are examples like use case, class, activity, state, sequence, component, etc some of the diagrams used in UML. And it is very important that some of, the, some of these diagrams like activity diagram and the use case diagram can be used in with uh, structured methodologies. So, uh, uh, the diagrams such as uh, class diagram, sequence diagrams, you need to uh, uh, use an object oriented approach to uh, draw these diagrams. Right. And then, uh, as you know, the system analysis, you look at what must be done to solve the problem, where you emphasize on the business problem, uh, where the implementation details are not considered. And uh, if you take the design, you, are, you will look at, the, look at how to solve the problem, you include implementation details and things like database design, interface design, the program design, network uh, design uh, falls into this uh, the design uh, design section and then uh, things to be done in the design stage where you need to explore the alternative uh, technical uh, solutions uh, based on different uh, design strategies there are things like the way of development like developing whether you are going to develop from scratch or using open source components you look at and the hardware environment such as standalone, whether you are going to develop a standalone system or network system or web based system, you have to look at. And then the choice of uh, system software, whether you are using going to use uh, Windows or Linux, you will look at. And then you will, uh, uh, you will uh, come, uh, come across several options and then you need to decide on the best option. Uh, you need to select to develop the system. And uh, if you look at this slide, you can see the some of the examples of uh, this range of options where it can be a re, uh, to re-engineer the manual process will be one option or enhance existing computer processes will be another option. Then purchase, you may uh, uh, purchase a package software. There are software already available. So, you can buy uh, this package software. Or you may design and construct a new computer based system where you install in one computer, which is a standalone system, or it can be a uh, where for you design and develop a, a computer based system where it is a web based system. So, like that, or it can be a network system within the 
uh, organization. So uh, this will uh, uh, like that you will you will uh, look at several options. And uh, after defining this option, you have to uh, analyze this option and find the best solution. If you take an example like library system, you know the activity is happening in a library where you may you may buy library system software uh, or you may uh, develop a standalone um, uh, system where you install in one machine in the library or it can be a, a network system where you install in uh, several computers in the library or it can be a web based system and also you can have various uh, options in the web based system where you may use a RFID tags like uh, RFID stands for radio frequency. Uh, frequency identification tags you may include and then you may have barcode readers to scan the, the uh, student uh, ID, um, uh, the books uh, to get the information so that you can minimize the typing and also you may, uh, uh, you may tag the books with uh, magnetized strip. So like that you can have various options. So the users may want to develop the most sophisticated option. but as system analyst you have to decide what is the best option where you have to uh, not uh, uh, you will not just uh, use what the, uh, the users want you to uh, develop but uh, you may think of uh, the feasibility and then find out the best solution. And then uh, uh, this uh, to find out the best solution you have to look at different feasibility tests where in your first year systems analysis and design course you may have learned about this feasibility test, operation feasibility, cultural feasibility, technical feasibility, schedule feasibility, economic feasibility and legal feasibility like that you have learned six uh, feasibility tests. So you will look at this test and then analyze these options that you have uh, identified based on this feasibility test and decide on the best option. And then you may uh, to when to analyze this uh, and decide on the best option you may uh, draw several uh, there are two uh, matrices that you may draw one is the candidate system entries where you will uh, have uh, as columns the the candidates and the systems and then as uh, rows you may represent the characteristics of characteristics that differentiate the candidates and uh, so like the stakeholders where you identify the system, how the system will uh, interact with people, then uh, under knowledge against knowledge you may identify how data stores to be implemented, how inputs will be uh, captured, outputs will be uh, uh, generated and then uh, the processors where you look at identify how uh, the manual business process will be modified how computer processes will be uh, implemented. Then communication you may look at identify how processes and data will be distributed. So th like that you can de uh, develop a candidate system matrix with those information. And this is the most important one feasibility analysis matrix where you will look at uh, these uh, different feasibility tests for each of these options that you have identified and then analyze them. You may give a, a weighted score for each of these candidates and then you may uh, analyze these uh, candidate systems based on this data score and then uh, decide on the best option. You can refer the systems analysis and design a recommended textbook in your first year and the object oriented analysis and design recommended textbook in the second year. Uh, main recommended text you can refer to find out about this feasibility analysis matrix. And then the in the system design things to be done, you analyze using feasibility test the options that you have identified and then select the best uh, solution after analyzing and develop on technical models and specifications to implement the required databases, programs, uh, uh, user interfaces, uh, networks, etc. And then we look at what are the modeling methods used in system analysis and design, uh, the structured methodologies depends on the methodology you may use data flow diagrams and relationship diagrams uh, commonly used uh, process and data models are the process and data models are these DFD and ERD in structured methodologies and then you can start with logical models followed up by physical physical models 
And if you look at the data flow diagrams, you may first uh, draw the context diagram where you may draw it in the analysis stage. And then the top level diagram also you may draw in the analysis stage. Where in the top level diagram you use the library system, you may identify the main processes like the uh, for example, library system, the reservation, registration of books, registration of members, then lending, uh, returning of books. So, you can consider as the top level processes. So, you may draw the top level diagram and then you decompose these top level processes until elementary functions are uh, reached and then you convert these elementary function logic uh, uh, into uh, uh, decision tables, decision trees and also you may draw the logical data flow diagrams and then convert into physical data flow diagrams. So, you do these things in your uh, if you are following a data flow approach and then uh, you cannot just write uh, uh, by uh, programs by just looking at the data flow diagram you have to uh, uh, describe the elementary level processes in detail there you can use decision table, decision ta tree and pseudocode and uh, uh, this uh, data flow diagrams are getting outdated it's not part of UML or it's not used in object oriented analysis and design. And then if you uh, look at the another important uh, technique and relations diagram used with structured methodologies which is still being used, it's not outdated with object oriented development also ERD is still used where you there also you will first uh, build a context data model where it contains no attributes where you can do it in your analysis stage. Then key based uh, data models are built including attributes and keys include data types and domains where the normalization process you can go through. Logical data models is then transformed to physical data models for the uh, chosen DB DBMS or database schema include implementation details. So, that is how you develop the entity models. And if you uh, the use a structured uh, methodology you can still use this uh, um, some of the UML diagrams like use case diagram, use case uh, narratives where you describe the use cases and then you can use activity diagram and in relationship diagram. So, it is another alternative way of uh, using the modeling methods in structured methodologies. And if you are using an object oriented methodology you, methodology, you can use UML diagrams and uh, uh, the, these UML diagrams do not depend on the methodology, it is a standard uh, modeling language, uh, whichever the object or in the methodology you are using, you can still use the same uh, UML diagrams. There are 14 diagrams in the latest version and these diagrams you can break into structure and behavior diagrams. So, if you look at this diagram, you can see the structure diagrams, class, component, object, profile, composite structure, deployment, package are all uh, structure diagrams then behavior diagrams, activity use case, state machine diagram and there are four interaction diagrams, sequence, communication, interaction, overview, timing or altogether there are uh, 14 diagrams. You do not need to draw all these diagrams for your methodology, you can select the appropriate ones, but if you are using an object oriented methodology, uh, the use case class and the sequence diagrams have to be there, others you can uh, if it is appropriate you can use. So, these three diagrams class uh, use case and uh, uh, sequence are very important uh, three diagrams if you are using uh, object oriented methodology. So, if you are using rational unified process choose as UML these are the three diagrams and if you are using agile methodologies this sequence, sequence is not popular, but class use case uh, are still used with agile methodologies. And uh, uh, let's look at an approach to object oriented system develop analysis and design. You model system requirements where you identify the actors and use cases and draw the top level use case diagram where you can do it in your analysis stage and there you will identify the you can draw it for the business uh, actors and business use cases and uh, uh, where you do not uh, look at the things like include uh, extend relationships generalization you will not, uh, will not look at at this stage where you will look at the top level version of the use case uh, model. 
and then you may also identify classes in the analysis and but the class diagrams you uh, uh, draw it in your design stage. Document use case narratives, uh, these the use cases you have identified, you need to describe them. There are also there are two versions, top level version, initially you have without the uh, implementation details which can start during analysis and then you can also draw the uh, system sequence diagrams where you do not look at uh, in the system sequence diagrams the object interactions that the just the actor and the uh, boundary object and you see the, uh, the actor interactions with the boundary objects you will look at in the uh, system sequence diagram and then you can develop the sequence diagrams. So, uh, there are by looking at the system sequence diagram you can also start designing the user interfaces. And then when you draw the sequence diagram you can complete your class diagrams. You can complete your class diagram only after you complete your sequence diagram if you are using the uh, object oriented uh, methodology like rational unified process. And then if you take a library example object oriented analysis and design typical approach where you identify business actors where things like librarian uh, will be an actor, member will be an actor depends on the uh, system member can be a system actor or can be a business actor only and then uh, main use cases are lending, returning, reservation, inquiry for example in a library system and then you can draw the use case model diagram including these uh, actors and the use cases. And in your design stage you complete the use case diagram with system actors where there you will look at who are the actors who is going to interact with the system. Uh, it depends on the library system, members also will be given in some library system the access like where you can give access to reservation, inquiry, you can give access so that member also can be a system actor. Then you describe the interface narratives in detail, the expand version where you will do things logic uh, involved with the uh, use case and then you draw the sequence diagram, class diagram and other rele relevant diagram. So, that is an approach to object oriented one approach typical approach to object oriented analysis and design. So, this is an example of documenting use case narrative the high level version where you can see the priority there it is the to see whether it, uh, how important the use case is we are typically high, medium and low. And then you have this uh, the source which is uh, where you will uh, uh, show the entities that trigger the creation of the use case. Uh, the example a document may create a use case and then uh, you may uh, so this is an example a document can you uh, create a uh, the, uh, the use case or the trigger use case and then you can see the primary business sectors you can specify, uh, who benefits fr from the use case and then uh, the other participant actors, interesting stakeholders and the description is uh, in brief and uh, also the, uh, the general understanding of the problem domain and scope you give the use case type business requirements. And then you can have an expanded version where you have things like uh, uh, preconditions, typically another use case uh, must be executed previously before this use case you can indicate that or the triggering event where when a, uh, a check is received you may trigger this use case you can indicate that. Then the typical course of events like in a library system lending scenario the or the borrowing scenario you check the member uh, whether he is valid uh, member check overdue books over limit whether he is allowed to borrow the what is the maximum number of books that he is allowed to borrow and if you are his, whether he is trying to borrow more than that you have to check over limit then check whether this copy you are he is trying to borrow is a borrowable copy and then only you confirm. So, you can have all these things in your typical course of events. Then you can also have the error messages, confirm messages under alternative courses and then the post conditions you can have. Uh, be, it can be a copy handed over to the member will be a post condition after uh, performing this use case. So, uh, you can find out more details about this uh, use case narrative if you look at the recommended text uh, uh, given for your systems analysis and design. So, this is an example of uh, the template of uh, your system sequence diagram where you have the actors and the boundary object 
you have the actor interactions with the boundary objects, you can also specify the return messages, no object interactions specified. Then modeling methods used in object oriented analysis and design, uh, identify actors use cases and draw the top level use case diagram will be the first step you do in analysis uh, in the modeling and you may also identify classes, draw document use case narratives top level initially and then start uh, you may start during analysis, uh, the, then draw, draw in the system sequence diagram, then you start designing the user interface sequence diagrams you draw and the class diagrams. So, these are the other diagrams that you can draw, UML diagrams. And then in your design chapter, the structure of the system should be very clear to the reader after reading the chapter. So, you should include things that make this uh, uh, the, the structure very clear and there should be evidence also of a methodological, uh, methodological approach uh, to the design of the system the, and the user interface design. It is very important that what you mean by user interface design is not just uh, including the user interfaces, you include your user interfaces in the uh, user documentation. The, here you have to concentrate on the user interface design what design decisions that you have taken. You, if you have taken some major design decisions, you can indicate these things in your design section. Right. And then the uh, design chapter, you should include section on alternative solution, which you discussed earlier, and the justification, how you selected the best uh, option uh, the after looking at the feasibility test for different options and you decide on the best option. And then diagram in structural approach GFP including process description of elementary level functions which is important if you are using GFP the elementary level functions should be described otherwise programmers cannot just write programs by looking at the data flow diagrams. And then you also should have ER and relationship diagram or you can also use use case diagrams narratives use case narratives activity diagrams and ERD which is possible, but uh, not the object oriented diagrams like uh, class sequence should not be used for this uh, if you are using structured methodology. Then diagrams used in object oriented approach, use case diagrams, narratives they are details should be given, class diagrams, sequence uh, diagrams, ERD if relational database is used. This is important because ERD is still popular because still the object oriented databases are not popular. So, still uh, those who use object oriented approach use uh, relational databases. Therefore, ERD is still being used. So, you can use the ER, uh, uh, include a ER and relationship diagram and also design of the user interfaces you can include in the design chapter. And also other diagrams whichever diagram is appropriate, you can include UML diagrams for this project. Okay, thank you.